Yes, in uh, <coughs> one who commits uh, suicide, uh, according to the theory of karma, will uh, have a short lives in future. One who assists will have a more uh, physical suffering and mental suffering because he assists uh, somebody to die. He will be very, uh, may have a lot of sicknesses. <coughs> Uh, in uh, among uh, Buddhist monks, according to Theravada tradition, if a monk uh, encourages a person to die, and if the person dies because of his encouragement, the the very moment the person dies, the monk ceases to be a monk. He is no longer a monk. In, according to Theravada tradition, a highly fully ordained monk uh, neither can kill nor can he assist or support, encourage somebody to die. What another person sh must do is uh, uh, help the person as much as humanly possible. Only thing we must help the person to live, in spite of all our human possibilities, if the still if, if if the person still suffers, that is beyond our human capability, and therefore we should not do anything about it. Until the last breath, we do everything we can do intentionally to help the person. So the rest we leave to his karma. If his come is so bad, nothing on earth helps him, you cannot take over his come. Just like when an animal is wounded, you shoot and finish off. Uh, we don't do that to human beings. Uh, even for animals, we are not supposed to do that. We treat, we take care of the animal and do everything possible. Animal will die. We know the animal will die. Similarly, human beings, when it is in such a bad shape, that person may not live too long. But we should not uh, try to uh, end it uh, deliberately. But uh, we try to keep the person alive through uh, uh, natural means, <clears throat> uh, but if we uh, plug to a machine, uh, brain is dead, the body will remain uh, because of the heart pumps. The kidneys are not working, the lungs are not working, you're all fixed up to everything. Right. Instead of uh, putting into machine uh, for our glory and ego, uh, we uh, treat the person in conventional way until the person dies. Send life yeah, in no instead artificial. of life support. Not artificial, not artificial. Not artificial. I would not believe in that kind of artificial living uh, when the body and the brain is dead kidneys are dead, lung is not functioning. <laughs> anyway, let us uh, try get, to get back to our discussion. So, uh, we crave for searching, looking for something. We crave. Until we find it. Then another craving arises for Q. 
keeping it, maintaining it. One craving is called uh, in Pali samudachara, that is uh, samudachara thanna, uh, craving that uh, maintaining, uh, maintain what we have already got. In the Mahanidana Sutta, Buddha has given a series of examples of a, a craving for search. He said, in dependence upon feeling, there is craving. In dependence upon, dependence upon craving, there is pursuit. In dependent upon pursuit, there is gain. In dependence upon gain, there is decision making. In dependence upon decision making, there is desire and lust. In dependent upon desire and lust, there is attachment. Independent upon attachment, there is a possessiveness. Independence upon possessiveness, there is stinginess. Independence upon stinginess, there is safeguarding. And because of safeguarding, Various evil, unwholesome phenomena originate, such as taking up of clubs and weapons, conflicts, quarrels, disputes, in insulting speech, slander, and falsehood. You can see <coughs> uh, the way how craving leads into conflicts. Uh, this is why the Buddha said inner conflict and outer conflict. In uh, Sangyutta Nikaya there is a stanza. Uh, Anto jata bahi jata. Internal conflicts, external conflict. Internal conflicts always bugging the mind, troubling the mind, making life very unhappy for the person that has the desire, craving. Then it spells out you know, it, it spreads out to the world. You have a question? Yes, um, what's, what's the name of the Sutta you just mentioned about conflict? That is called Mahanidana Sutta. Mahanidana. Mahanidana. Nikaya Sutta number 12. So, uh, So you can see the, the way how greed spread out into the world for fighting, quarreling, killing, conflict, wars, and so forth. All start within oneself, inside. We may search for this thing and that thing. We may search for gold. We may search for oil. We may search for something, and as soon as we found it, then everything, oh, the entire uh, conflict begins. <laughs> and uh, so, search and research begins with greed.
So Buddha said, this conclusion is very important. He said, thus Ananda, these two phenomena, being a duality, converge into a unity in feeling. We read in uh, dependent origination, dependent upon feeling, greed or desire arises. Now, this sentence is very important. These two phenomena, being a duality, converge into a unity in feeling. So we have a feeling and the two types of craving arises. Two, uh, uh, two phenomena means two types of craving. And two types of act, um, events, two kinds of events, they all converge in feelings. What are the two types of uh, uh, phenomena and two types of events? Events that takes place in this life, all events. And the process that takes place in this life is the phenomena. And uh, it starts within oneself and spread out. All happen in this life. And the other is in the next life. Same process or similar process take place in the next life. So both converge in one place, feeling. Feeling arises now here, and it has its, uh, you know, ripples of repercussions here, spreading all over our life into the society, into the world. And when we die, it will repeat the next life. And here start in, in feeling. And therefore, Suffering goes along with this, here and now, and in future. That is why we say the Buddha's explanation of suffering is not mere psychological. This whole phenomena of uh, events, the whole chain of events, affecting the whole world, is not mere psychological. It's a real physical. And the what, what will happen next life is not mere psychological, but very deep phenomenological. And therefore, the Mindful meditator mindfully must reflect. That is where mindful reflection comes in. When, you, when we meditate, we just not uh, focus only what is happening here and now, this moment, but what is happening here and now, this moment, has its uh, uh, impact on tomorrow and there, not only here and now, but tomorrow and there. And that is why it is extremely important for us to understand the nature of the Four Noble Truths. And also it is important for us to understand how much my greed affects the world. 
when I am greedy, I affect, I, uh, uh, my greed affects everybody that associates with me. You see? Because I am the one who is trying to grab the bigger part of the cake, larger portion of the cake. And the other person also wants to have a part of it, but I don't want to give any. All I want to keep for myself. And there conflict arises. Quarrels. Uh, if I am very powerful, I can intimidate everybody to keep my portion. Uh, if I am uh, not powerful, I will fight to hold on to my portion and so forth. So, that is called samudhachara tanna. Samudhachara tanna means uh, craving that pervades everything else. Pervasive craving. Uh, eh? Pali word samudhachara is M-U D long A C long A R A Samudhachara Trying to the craving that we use to protect ourselves, protect what we got, is called Esita Tanna. E S I T A Esita. And the craving that we have for gaining is called esana tanna. E S A N long A. Esana. And then Buddha goes on to explaining where craving arises. Craving is the cause of suffering, craving of all kind. We even don't have to think very much about it, because it is so obvious. Uh, every adult knows that craving is the cause of our suffering. It is, we, it is born with our birth. We can perpetuate it, encourage it, support it, and uh, even glorify it. Craving people, because of their ignorance, they glorify it, saying, the more you have, the better. So this is how we glorify it. From the babyhood till uh, we die, we perpetuate it. Uh, I think in almost every society, uh, adults encourage young ones to have more possessions. Uh, so we make ourselves dependent upon our craving. So dependent, so long as we depend, we are shaking. When we depend on our craving for our joy, we shake, tremble. Uh, there is a sutta in 
अंग संयुक्त निकाय कोल उपनिषा सूत्र एंड दैट सूत्र से निश्चित अंचे छालती दैट इज वन हु डिपेंड्स ऑन क्रेविंग इज शेकिंग In this discourse, we read almost at the end of every passage, "Anisitoche viharati." Let me show it at, at least in one place in English, so that you can uh, see it, see the repetition. Uh, okay. You can see page thirty-five, for instance. Page thirty-five. In trilinear translation, you can see the last Pali word "anisitoja viharati" at the bottom of the page. Can you see that "anisitoja viharati"? Meaning is he dwells. Independent, not clinging to anything in the world. Anisita means not dependent, independent. Dependent on what? Dependent on desire, greed, clinging, craving. And this is the message from the beginning to the end of this discourse. We come across over and over again. Nature kinchu loke upadiyati, not clinging to anything in the world. Here, world means. I think you all have read world in the Sangyutta Nikaya when you were reading Sangyutta Nikaya. The world means six senses, six internal senses, six and external senses. And their consciousness. These eighteen elements are called world. So when we cling to, we cling to these eighteen elements: internal basis, external basis, and therefore we are shaky. Not steady, because internal senses are not steady. As I said this morning, light was dark, dim, because my internal sense was not very steady, weak. Even the external things are bright, steady. Internal things won't be steady, and no external thing is steady because they also change. And what happens in between, what is called consciousness, not steady as well as well. And we are on shaky ground on three levels. <laughs> All the three uh, groups of elements, internal. Six internal elements that are called uh, base elements, external objective elements, and their consciousness element. Consciousness is also considered element. All are shaky, vibrating, changing, impermanent, and we rely. On them for our pleasure. Therefore, the pleasure also is shaky, unreliable. And the pleasure has its danger. What is the danger of pleasure? Impermanent, impermanent, subject to change. So, 
suffering naturally arises. And therefore Buddha said, Anisito Chaviharati, don't depend on them. Upanishad Sutta says, Anisito Cha, Nisito Cha Chalati, Anisito Na Chalati. When you depend on these things, you are shaky. When you don't depend on them, you are, not, you are steady, not shaky. So, uh, suffering arises because of this uh, uh, this craving on uh, craving for uh, unsteady, impermanent thing. Not because they are impermanent. We have suffering not because they are impermanent. Then why? Huh? We are clinging to impermanent things. That is why impermanent things make suffering. Impermanent itself doesn't make us suffer at all. Only, we, only when we attach to them. So, Craving, attachment, clinging, whatever terms we use, they all fall under the same category. So in this discourse, Buddha used only one word, craving. In the dependent origination, we have uh, craving and clinging, two things. He did not use the word clinging here, because when we have craving, Clinging is naturally there. You cannot have craving without clinging. And therefore Buddha used only one word here. And he did not say clinging is a cause of suffering, but he said clinging to the five aggregates is suffering. So long as we have five aggregates and so long as we have cra craving, as long as we have craving and we have five aggregates and have not d gotten rid of craving, these two always cling together. You know, you have a craving, you have aggregate. So the, the natural uh, tendency of craving is to cling to these aggregates. If you remove the care craving and leave aggregates alone, there is no clinging. So the magnet of bringing this together to hold together is the craving. So that is why Buddha did not uh, say specifically uh, craving and clinging as two factors of suffering. He used only one because when you have one, other comes free. You buy one, other comes free. <laughs> so I think we stop here. And we continue this afternoon.